Perfect. All right. Thank you, Andre. Yes. Hello, everybody. I think we are good to go. Um, thanks for coming today, people in the audience. It's good to see all of you. So, yes, we are going to be talking rental beast. We're going to get into all sorts of different stuff today. Uh, why rentals, uh, stuff about the platform, et cetera. But first of all, just brief introduction. So my name is PJ. I oversee the customer success group, client services, really anything with the customer. Uh, me and my team, uh, we deal with that. Yeah, you're okay. Um, we are fully dedicated to helping every single person, whether you're part of the MLS, whether you're a member of the MLS, et cetera, having a great experience, understand Rental Beast, how to use Rental Beast, how to make money doing rentals. Um, at this point, I have about nine years worth of experience. I've helped and me and my group have worked with tens of thousands of real estate professionals, whether they're just starting out in their business, could be a completely new real estate professional or might be a little bit more seasoned and looking how to bring rentals into your business. So we're going to get a lot into the symbiotic relationship between rentals and your for sale business, um, which as Andre said, you know, should be a tool that should be a piece of essentially every single real estate professional's business. So what are we going to be getting into? Well, first of all, meet Rental Beast, how we started, why we started. I think it's a very important piece uh, to the puzzle. Why rentals? We're going to go into some statistics that I think are probably going to surprise all of you. Um, why rentals, especially in the economic headwinds we are currently in, is a, a very important. The tool that all of you currently have access to. So right now, if you wanted to, you could go into your George MLS dashboard and access Rental Beast. So we are live have been live for the last, I think, two or three months, uh, a free product that all of you get access to. We'll go into some of the actual core functions of the platform. Uh, the tenant screening tool, like we talked about, Glenn, earlier, we have a whole search interface, uh, areas you can manage some of your listings. All of this is uh, the free part uh, of Rental Beast. And lastly, we are going to be doing a lot of training. So I'll do that at the very end. If you want to follow along with me when you're doing that, you can, uh, totally up to you. So questions, if you got them, for people here in the audience, please, you know, if you have questions, uh, put your hand up and I'll, I'll kind of do it as we're going. For people who are uh, watching at home, if you have a question, you can type into the chat and Andre, um, or I believe Chrissy will help answer those questions. Uh, also, if you want to unmute yourself, you can ask me the question as well. So, yes. I do not have handouts. Nope. Uh, the nice thing is everything I'm going to be going over is going to be available inside the platform. So you can, there's different help center uh, articles that cover what I'm talking about today. Yeah, there's we, a recording. All right, so let's get rolling. So who is Rental Beast? I think this is pretty important to understand. So we are a leading real estate technology firm headquartered in Somerville, Massachusetts. That's about 10 minutes north of Boston. Why we started, so our CEO and founder is a real estate professional, he's a broker. He was working in New York City, uh, working rentals, ended up managing about a team of 50 rental agents in New York City. Realized very quickly that the software and technology that was available for rentals and specifically for the real estate professional, you know, the real estate agent, was not a snuff. And he made it his essentially life's mission to build the best in class lead to leasing platform out there for the real estate professional. So why do I say that? Uh, real estate's in our blood. I am a, a licensed agent. We hire licensed agents. Our CEO is a licensed agent. You know, we built this tool out of something that we wanted to use um, to help do our, you know, grow our own business. That's really important. Real estate's in our DNA. I said lead to lease, and I mean it. Lead generation tools, lead qualification tools, client communication tools, showing tools, all the way through to actually an application and tenant screening tool. So you get all of that for free as part of your George MLS membership. And at the core of our product is this massive database of off MLS rentals. We're gonna get into a lot of what that means, but spoiler alert, majority of the rentals are not listed on the MLS. So giving all of you access to those rentals or a preview of those listings is a big reason why George MLS wanted to work with us to make sure that all of their members have the tools, tech, and training to bring rentals into their business. 
we're going to get a lot more into the database um, in a little bit. So just a, one last slide about us, then we'll get into why rentals. We are the exclusive provider of rental related services for the National Association of Realtors. National Associ Association of Realtors is obviously a massive group. It's an incredible endorsement. We work very closely with them and we're excited to be, you know, this designation was a, a big deal for us. We work with about 700,000 real estate professionals across the country. We are national. We've got eight of the 12 largest MLSs uh, that we're working with. Obviously, George MLS is one of those. And we also chair the rentals work group for RESO. Has anybody heard of what RESO means at all? Okay. A little bit of the unsexy side of this, of the real estate industry, but it stands for the Real Estate Standards Organization. And it's all about um, the fields and the listing details, making sure that they get standardized as best as we can across the industry. So when you put a house, I'm sure everybody's listed a house for sale here. When you put it on to, or I hope so, um, when you've put that onto the MLS, that gets pushed out to all sorts of different sites, right? And making sure that your details, the fields are um, the same across the, all the websites is a big part of that. On the for sale side, it's, They've done a very good job doing that. On the rental side, it's the wild, wild west. And so we're helping chair that group, making sure that rentals and the data fields behind rentals are standardized across the industry. So that's a little about Rental Beast. Let's talk about why rentals, and especially in these economic headwinds, you know, why it's important. And I start with a question. So this is interactive. So what percent of agents believe rentals are an important source of income and or future buyers. And we got this number. We had a big survey that went out at the beginning of this year to all sorts of real estate professionals. We had thousands of respondents. So what percent do you guys think? Two. 2%. Okay. It's a little bit higher than that, but that's a good guess. Anybody else? 20%. 20%. Okay. What else we got? Somebody said 15 or less. Probably. 15 or less. All right. You guys are going to be shocked on this one. Eighty-six percent. These are your peers. These are people, these are real estate professionals across the country. Basically, nine out of 10 real estate professionals believe that rentals are an important source of current in income and or future buyers. So like I said earlier, I've been doing this for a bunch of years. When I would go do these types of classes back in 2016, 2017, this number was definitely closer to like that 30, 40%, right? People just, there were some people who cared, maybe, maybe made it their niche, but it was not as widespread as it has been. Um, and so something's changed. There, something's changed in the real estate market, which is why so many real estate professionals believe rentals need to be a part of it. So a few facts, fact number one, the rental market is just massive. It is absolutely enormous. Nearly 40% of the United States population is renting. Um, when you get closer to more city centers, you know, like downtown Atlanta or even some of the suburban areas, you're getting closer to 55% to 60% of people who are living there are renting. It equates to about 113 million people uh, throughout the country are renting. Now, each one of you is a business owner, right? You have your, your real estate professional. Is a good business to say, hey, I'm not going to work with essentially half the population? Not good business, right? So this is why we're starting to see this change of people starting to work more rentals, especially over the last two to three years since COVID, rentals have become very, very hot. Just a lot of people renting. And as a business owner, you want to be able to have the largest customer base you possibly can have. Making sure rentals is a piece of your business is important to do that. The rental market, you know, there's two sides to the real estate market. You've got the rental side, you've got the purchase side. And there's, um, this is definitely not you know, new to anybody. We've got some affordability headwinds going on right now. Interest rates, where are they right now? Anybody know? Six or seven. Six or seven, right? Gone are the days of that sub three. Um, I think nobody really knows what's happening with this interest rates. I've seen articles that say maybe it gets back to 5% in 2025. There are some people who say it's going to go to double digits. We just don't know. But the fact here is it is absolutely pricing out, absolutely pricing out would-be home buyers in the market. And those people still have to live somewhere. So where are they going to go? They're either going to work with family, but they're most likely going to be renting. 
Fact number uh, three, I guess, housing inventory. It is still low. We are seeing a, a continued low supply of homes. And there's a few different reasons for that. And I'm sure, you know, I'm not going to cover all of them, but there's a lot of would-be sellers who don't want to put their property on the market because of the interest rate they've been locked in at. So they're on that sub three, sub four interest rate. They don't want to have to go buy another house in that seven, you know, six, 7% range. Additionally, I think this is really interesting. And in the Atlanta market, it's very real. Um, the investor side. So like think about those big institutional investors, some of the big banks, uh, REITs, the real estate investment trusts. They somewhat changed their business model over the last decade or so. So earlier, like before the Great Recession, um, before 2008, a lot of these uh, big investors were in the market, but they were buying and flipping houses. So they would buy it, fix it up, maybe put a little bit of investment in, but then put it back on the market. And their cash flow was the delta between what they bought and sold it at. That changed after the Great Recession. A lot of these institutional investors realized, you know what? Shoot, I'm not going to sell this house. I'm going to rent it. And so what we're seeing is this inventory that traditionally would have gotten back on the market just isn't. So this strategy of essentially a buy, hold, and rent, which I'm sure you probably know people who are looking for rental properties to buy and rent out, you know, that's happening on a massive scale for some very large institutional investors. And Atlanta, uh, you know, the greater Atlanta market is, has been one of the hottest institutional investor markets in the country for the last decade. You got high interest rates. You got a low supply of homes. What is that doing to prices? What did you say? Through the roof. And guess what? They're not really coming down, right? All this is to say that there is absolutely affordability headwinds for would-be buyers. And I think that it's important to, to think through this. It's not that they don't want to buy. That is still very real. It's that they may not be able to afford it. So you have those would-be buyers being on the sidelines. And NAR uh, released a I think a somewhat sobering statistic or report earlier this year about affordability headwinds. Since NAR started tracking, this is the first time buyer rates are at the lowest level since they started tracking it. Millennials as a percent of buyers. Look at that change. It's a 15% drop year over year from 2021, 2022. First time buyers, 10% drop. I think it's important to understand that this is not necessarily that they don't want to buy. It's just right now the market is hard to buy. There is, though, a bit of a structural change going on with the millennial demographic. And I think this is interesting. So uh, the uh, people over at Green Street Advisors, their advisory consulting group, did a massive study uh, working with millennials to understand if they are looking to buy, they want to rent. Three out of eight millennials believe that they're going to rent for life. If I asked the baby, junior, baby boomer generation, what do you think out of eight say that they're going to rent for life? Zero, right? This is a change. This is a structural change in the housing market of people basically deciding they want to rent. Why is this happening? And I know from experience, I am a millennial. Um, you, we got Andre in the back as a millennial as well. Um, we are not as location um dependent as i think our previous generations our parents generations it is not uncommon for my generation to go to different parts of the country and not settle down where they grew up and so this location um becoming location agnostic for millennials is a big deal you put this uh flexibility of remote work and the ability to essentially work wherever and all of a sudden, you start to have the millennial group saying, you know what, I want that flexibility. I don't want to necessarily have to buy a home. Um, I want to be able to rent for life. So this is a, a change that we are seeing in the market. However, the good thing is three out of the remaining five plan to buy as soon as they can in the next 36 months. So all this to say, over the last five to 10 years, the market's changing a little bit. We are seeing uh, higher interest rates. We're seeing uh, prices still be high. You've got a bunch of millennials and first-time home buyers who want to buy who potentially can't. So working rentals as a way to keep your pipeline of business solid is really what we want to do and why George MLS you know, brought us in. Here's a great statistic that should make everybody here happy. 88% of renters said they would reuse or refer the real estate professional. 
essentially nine out of 10 of your clients, if you're working on the rental side, they're going to want to reuse you. I am part of the statistic. I bought a property up in Boston about a year and a half ago. Uh, me and my wife used the real estate agent that we had rented from for three years. He knew me. He knew my wife. Um, he tr I trusted him. Um, and we ended up buying a property through him. This is a very real statistic from NAR. It is to basically say, hey, the best way to make sure that you have a sustainable pipeline of buyers and you're not trying to compete with all the other real estate professionals when a buyer says they want to buy, work with them when they're a renter. Make some, make a little, you can definitely make some commission off of it. I know there's a ton of real estate professionals who don't make any money off the rentals and are strictly doing it to make sure that their pipeline is there. The great thing where y'all where are based, the Georgia opportunity for commission is massive. It's one of the best markets in the country um, to be a real estate professional working rentals. So this is estimated for the state of Georgia. It's not just Atlanta, state of Georgia. We estimate about 1.1 million rental units, state of Georgia. Based off of a 5% vacancy rate, we're looking somewhere around that 57, uh, 57,000 rental units are active at any point. Based off the data that we have, we estimate that about 25% of rentals are offering some sort of agent commission. And I think this is important to say, there's a lot of rentals that are not on the MLS that are offering an agent commission. You can get those through Rental Beast. We estimate that the average agent rental fee <clears throat> so like what is the commission is right around $450 on a per commission basis. And that's the average, right? There are some that are full month's rent, half month's rent, et cetera. So we put all of that together. The projected annual rental commissions is $65 million in the state of Georgia. That is an enormous amount of money. When we put together the renter to buyer conversions, we estimate, and this is based off some of the data that we've got, about one in five of your clients, if you work them on the rental side, should be able to convert into a buyer with no outreach plan, meaning you just don't necessarily always talk to them, but you're trying to work with them. When you put that together with the commissions, it's almost half a billion dollars that is coming off of rentals. So really what I'm trying to say here is rentals should be a part of your business. What I am not saying is rentals should be your only piece of business absolutely not what we are trying to do here. Rentals and your sales should be a symbiotic relationship. You should have the ability to do it when somebody comes and asks you. If you really want to work it as a pipeline, you now have the tools to do that through George MLS with Rental Beast. And we have an enormous amount of training that you can do as well. But any questions at all? Anything I just talked about? No? Okay. So Let's talk about why rental beast. So what do all of you currently have access to uh, through your George MLS dashboard? So number one, you have a best in class tenant screening and application provider completely free to you. We're gonna get into a lot more about this uh, very shortly, but this is essentially integrated directly into your core MLS systems. So if you put a rental in through Paragon, or Connect MLS, there is now a field that specifically asks you, do you want to use the Rental Beast Apply Now tool? So we're directly in, uh, integrated into the core MLS systems. Top right, you've got a powerful rental search. So let's say you're looking for a client in Decatur. If you run a search in Rental Beast, you're going to be bringing in not only all of the MLS listings, so we get a, a direct feed from all the George MLS listings. You're also going to get access to all the off MLS rental listings that Rental Beast has found as well. And you get a preview of those listings. The preview means you get access to the address, bedrooms, the baths, square footage, data available, et cetera. That's all now available when you search for a rental inside of Rental Beast. There is a paid product for Rental Beast. My goal here is to not sell. I'll talk about that at the end. If you do want full access to all the rental listings that are not on the MLS, meaning their full listing details, that is part of Rental Beast Pro. Rental Beast Pro is $18 a month, um, and we'll go into that a little bit later. I'm not here to sell, just here to be informative and help you guys understand what you got. 
So you get access to these owner source listings or a preview of those listings. You also get access to some leads and exposure. So when you add your rental listing into Paragon or Connect MLS or one of the other ad edit systems, it will automatically get to Rental Beast. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. And that listing will go automatically onto rentalbeast.com. You're listing your lead. We want to give you a little bit more exposure for that listing getting on Rental Beast. Client management and alerts, all the stuff that you'd expect to be able to do with a client, meaning add them to your client list, set them up on an um, auto drip. So like new properties that fit their criteria, hit the market, you can get those automatically sent out to the client. You can run a summary market analysis. You can print listing reports, all the stuff that you'd expect to be able to do. You can do that within Rental Beast. And then last but not least, and probably my favorite piece of what we have, is our rental centric education. We built an entire university about rentals. So if you've never done a rental transaction, or you may have done one or two, but you don't feel as confident doing it, you now have access, fully free access to the premier online rental real estate university called Rental Beast University. It's accessed directly through your Rental Beast portal. Um, we basically took an education veteran uh, who did online curriculum development, put them in a room with a bunch of real estate professionals and said, hey, take everything out of their brain, put it into online courses so you can learn how to essentially do rentals. And we did that. A bunch of different courses on converting renters into buyers. How do you work leads the first time you ever work with a lead? How do you, um, uh, we talked earlier about how do you prospect for, for rent by owners and get their business? to get rental listings. We've got courses in all of that. So accessing Rental Beast, you go directly through your Georgia MLS dashboard. Under your quick access, you, sh you may see the Rental Beast icon. If you do not see the Rental Beast icon, you click the gear icon. Oh, I've lost my mouse. Yeah, it's okay. There we go. You click the, uh, the gear icon. Wait a second. There we go. You click the gear icon, uh, and then you'd select Rental Beast from the drop down, add it, and then it's now going to be in your quick access uh, toolbar. Additionally, under tools, see this little this tools right here. You click that, and you can see Rental Beast and get directly through Rental Beast that way. What you do not do is go to RentalBeast.com. All right. If you try to go to RentalBeast.com and sign up, you're not going to have the experience that you want to have you have to come through your Georgia MLS dashboard. So this is how you would access it. There's no passwords needed. There's no login information. You click the Rental Beast button and you're accessing Rental Beast directly through it. Again, do not go to rentalbeast.com. That is not the way to sign in. So in terms of listing data flow, and we, we get a lot of questions about this. If you have a rental listing, you keep adding it exactly the same way you have been for all these years. You go to Connect MLS, Paragon, or one of your other ad edits, whatever you like to use, keep using it. Excuse yes. Me. The recording? Yes. Yep. And I'm going to show you, there's a ton of training that we have that covers everything available to you um, at your fingertips. So we'll go through that. But uh, add your listing the way you have been. It gets into this Georgia MLS listings database and then pushed out to all the other searches. So again, what should you not do is add your listing into Rental Beast. We will automatically get your rental listing. All right. So in your in your profile, you will get the Rental Beast listing, or you will get we'll get your listing. Good to go. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So absolutely. Let's get into Rental Beast overview. Uh, we, it's a lot about what we just talked about, but we're going to go more in depth. We're going to start with our, our one of our core products. It's our tenant screening and application tool. So I was actually kind of shocked. I was at a, uh, I was in another part of the country two weeks ago, and we were talking about tenant screening. And um, it's kind of com commonplace in that market to not screen your tenants, which I guess maybe that's something that's happening now, but it didn't really make a lot of sense. Tenant screening is the way to protect your investment and also protect your client's investment. You know, if you're representing an owner, the last thing you want to do is have somebody who, um, you know, has to get removed from the property or just takes a while for you to get that property leased. So screening tenants is an important piece of the tool. 
So how does apply now work? Well, it's very simple. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Number one, enable apply now for your listing. That is done inside of Connect MLS or Paragon. So when you get a rental, when you have a rental listing and you're adding it to the George MLS, there's now a field that says, do you want to use Rental Beast's online application tool? Once you enable it, we're going to send you an email with your unique link for your listing. And that link will allow you to invite renters to apply for your property. And I'll show you what that looks like shortly. Once that application has been submitted by the tenant, application report, uh, uh, the application package, which is their you know, filled out application, but also tenant screen reports are gonna be available for you to review. So what do you get in that? You get a credit report, you get any sort of landlord and tenant related court filings. So essentially some of the eviction history and you get criminal background information where available. Um, in Georgia, I don't think there's any sort of limitations on criminal background right now. So you guys are totally good there. Uh, if you are using it in different parts of the country though, you know there are some limitations depending on the state or the county. So just FYI, Georgia, there's no problems there. You should be able to get all the information I just, I just said. So why should you be using Apply Now? There's a few reasons. Number one, it cuts down on time. If you are using a paper application right now to screen your tenants, you are doing yourself a disservice. Um, I don't know if anybody recently has had to fill out a paper application. I had to do it uh, three years ago. It stinks. It took me about an hour and a half to fill out the PDF. It then took another three days to actually get the application processed. That is four days from when I saw the property to when I just got the reports available. Our whole process can take about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how well the applicant knows themselves. The reports are generated 24-7, 365. So whether you're doing it at midnight, 1 a.m. on a Sunday, reports are going to be available for you to review. Um, it also minimizes your liability. And so that, that's a big piece of this. I think every single... Yes? For the client, yes, it's $36 on a per application basis. But there's a... Hold that thought. We're going to get there uh, soon. But uh, to the, for the real estate agent, absolutely free. There is no cost to you. Um, even if you sign a lease using our application, we're not taking any sort of cut off of the lease. There is no money that we will take from you um, when you use those tools. So minis minimizing liability. This is an important piece of this. If I'm not sure if you all, if you all know this. If you are reviewing sensitive data like credit information, for a person and you should not be, you are technically violating some rules, the Fair Credit Reporting Act rules. If you get an email that's got a credit report in it and your email then gets compromised, you are liable if that person's information gets taken. If you are printing something down and mailing it, like a credit report, if that mail gets tampered with, you are also on the hook for liability. We wanted to rem remove all of that liability from you as much as we possibly could. Our tool is totally Fair Credit Reporting Act compliant, and there's a few reasons that how we do that. Number one, we're never going to send you a credit report in email, meaning you're going to get notified when the credit report's ready to view or the criminal background or you know the eviction history, but you have to sign in to Rental Beast to actually see. We're never going to send anything to you via email. Additionally, um, and for people who have worked with uh, investors or landlords, th this will make more sense to you, but some owners or landlords, when you're representing them, they may want to be the one who actually reviews the, the tenant screen reports and makes a decision. For some landlords and owners, they don't care. They want you to do it. So in that case, you'd be a true proxy. But if your landlord does want to view it and you're actually seeing that information, technically you're not supposed to be, especially if you're not the one making the decision. So our tool will allow you to bypass looking at that credit report altogether and send it directly to the landlord or the owner so that you don't have to do anything with it. If for whatever reason you do get the credit report and then your landlord's like, hey, shoot, I forgot. Can you please send it to me? You can also uh, automatically forward, essentially forward that report to them without having to download it and send it via email. So we want to remove the liability from you. And lastly, kind of going into your point, 
uh, happy renters. Why? Well, the system is easy to use. You can essentially get an application started and paid for within about 15 to 20 minutes to give you the reports. They get a copy of the credit report as well. So the renters will be able to see what information um, the landlord or the owner is viewing. And also, they have an unlimited use of this application for 30 days, meaning they have a one-time fee. They have to pay $36 once to start the application, or not started, to make sure the application gets submitted. But then they have unlimited use of that application for 30 days. So agents, it's absolutely free. There is no cost associated with it whatsoever. It's part of your Georgia MLS membership. For the tenant, it is $36. So you mean they apply once and they can get that for several different rentals? Yes, if that rental is using the rental beast online application. But yes, so it's they can, you know, it's pretty common. We have people who do two or three rentals or rental applications um, and they only have to pay once. So how do you actually enable apply now? This is a live look. I believe this is Connect MLS. So at the bottom here, there's now a new field. It says uh, Rental Beast Online Application. It's going to default to no. If you want to use the online Rental Beast application, you click yes. That's all you have to do to enable your listing. Our system will take over from there. So what happens once you enable? You're going to get an email um, like within 10 minutes of your listing going active. And it's going to give you a very important link. It is your quick apply link. And what that allows you to do is take that link and share it with any sort of tenant who's interested in applying to it. And I'll show you what that looks like shortly. If for whatever reason you forget that link or you lose the email or whatever it might be, you can always grab it again in Rental Beast under your My Listings tab. So that big red box on the right side of the screen, that's where your tenant quick apply link is for each one of your listings. Once you do enable it, we want to make it easy not only for you to invite renters to apply, but also for other agents to uh, invite their tenants to apply for your property. So this is a listing that did enable apply now. And you'll notice the big now or the big red apply now button. This is available inside of the rental beast listing details. So only for other real estate professionals, Georgia MLS members would have access to this page they can easily submit an application on behalf of their tenants to a property. Got a question. Yes. Um, how does the application process and reports compare to the My Smart Move website slash system through? Uh, TransUnion? Yeah. Uh, well, that's funny. We use TransUnion, so it's the same. <laughs> yeah. So yes, we use the TransUnion, um, uh, their tenant system called Smart Move. That's kind of like the backbone of our tool but they're not integrated with all of Georgia MLS how we are. Additionally, we make it very easy for the renter to actually apply directly to it as well. So when your listing goes active, it will go on to rentalbeast.com and it will also go into georgiamls.com. And I believe on both, there is an apply now button for a tenant to start an application directly as well. So what does the quick apply link actually look like? So I would suggest, um, this is a QR code. This is what we're seeing a lot of real estate professionals do with their quick apply links. And yes, you can go and use this. I would suggest it. All right. Um, so everybody who's there virtually, you can also uh, get the, click this Q, uh, QR code. It is a live look into a live, live listing, uh, Georgia listing. On there, you get a picture of the property. You get some information about the, pro, uh, about the agent. And there's a form submission there. You have first name, last name, email, and phone. If an applicant was interested in applying, they put their information in, in those four boxes, five boxes, and I think the button says start or apply, and they're brought directly into the application. Please do not apply for this listing. This is a real listing. So, you know, please don't apply for it. So this should give you a live look of actually what the quick apply link looks like. Again, please do not apply for this. This is a real listing. Um, I don't know if that person has any idea that I'm using them as a test, but um, this is one use case that we're seeing agents across the country use the quick apply links. It's a great way to make it easy for somebody to apply. Um, okay. So once, the, once somebody actually applies for the listing, then the tenant reports nine times out of 10 are available almost immediately. 
The only reason that tenant reports would not be available is if somebody does not have a social security number. So if you if your tenant does not have a social security number, do not use the apply now tool. You will not be able to get reports based off of that. Once they're ready, you're going to notice in this email on the left side, we tell you, hey, reports are ready to view. What do we not do is put the reports in the email because we are trying to not make you liable on that. You have a, a notice that says, please log in. You get logged directly into your application dashboard. On the right side where that big red um, box is, it says view application. You click that, then you're brought in to see all the tenant reports. So you'll get all the information that applicant filled out. You'll then get their tenant, uh, their credit report, which is directly from TransUnion. You're going to get the uh, any sort of criminal background if they have any, and also any sort of landlord uh, and tenant related court filings for that person as well. Whole process could take about 20 minutes max. It depends on how it sounds silly, but it depends on how well the renter knows themselves. They've got to go through the application. Questions, anything on the tenant screening? So y'all have access to this right now. It's completely free. It's part of your uh, Georgia MLS uh, package. What else did you say if you approve their criminal background? Uh, any sort of, of uh, eviction history, which is landlord or tenant related court filings. And then also uh, the credit report. And you've got a question about uh, if you view the credit report, do you see their actual social security number or just the report? Are you here for the test? No. Oh, perfect. You're in the right spot. Yes, welcome. I was listening to Oh, love it. Well, here, welcome. Um, say, what well, do you actually see their social security number? Yeah, or just the reporting information. You do not see their social security number. You will see their um, their credit report information. Um, are you verifying online? That's a good question. Well, we actually do not do income verification off of that. All right. If we have questions about online here, the uh, application process is there something we can call? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. We're, we, I'll show you. There's a you can chat with us directly via chat tool. You can call us. I will give you the number at the end of this. We have a ton of training, so this is not going to be a one time training exercise for us. I think somebody had a question. So, yeah. can you hear me online? Yeah. Yes. Uh, when the application, does everyone over 18 need to apply? And does the $36 fee uh, apply per person? That's a great question. And the answer is yes to both of them. So if you have, you know, a, 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 you know, a two roommate situation, both of them are over the age of 18, both would be applying for the property. They both would pay $36. And, and if, if somebody like a over 18 child lives in a young person, I guess they're not a child by then, but uh, do they also need to apply if none of their income is going to be used? Only people who you're going to use that are going to use income. 18 or over. No 18. matter what. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yes, from my experiences, it's 18 or over. I think if you want to confirm with the actual landlord, I think that's part, you, you definitely should do that. But yes, my experience has been it's only 18 or over. Okay. Also, uh, Good morning, Mr. P. I'm sorry. You are correct. I actually manage apartments and it is 18 and over, even if it's your child. Perfect. They don't have to have income, but you have to run their credit because of the criminal background check. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Got a question about uh, what about commercial leases? We do nothing with commercial leases. So any sort of commercial property, we don't we don't do anything with it. Okay, let's move on to the search. So a big core part of why George MLS wanted to to work with Rental Beast and give all of you access to Rental Beast is from our search. So what is the search? Well. It is a lot bigger than what you're going to be finding on the on the Georgia MLS site. So this was taken last week. There is about 3,000 active Georgia MLS rental listings. You now have access to 12,000 active rental listings on top of your 3,000 with Georgia MLS. 
So total about 15,000. Now with the free version of Rental Beast, it is a, you get a preview of all of these off MLS rental listings. So what's the preview? You get the address, the beds, bath, uh, you get square footage, date available, days on market, et cetera. So why is this important? Well, if you're working with a tenant, odds are they're not just searching for MLS properties, right? They are looking at the internet as a whole. They are going to different sites. And we do as good, we do as a really good job essentially scooping up the internet uh, on the rental side to, to give access for all of you. It's better data for your comps. So what does that mean? Well, when you're pricing a property, if you are just using the MLS listings, it's a, you know, it's a good way to do it, but you're missing out on a lot of other inventory on a pricing side. And I'll show you that it actually does matter on a, on the, on a rent side in a second here for rent by owner prospect lists. So uh, I want all of you guys to go back to when you're getting licensed. Um, in one of the classes, when I, when I was doing it, what was one of the big things they told you as a new real estate agent, what should you be doing? To, to get your business going. It's a four letter word. Say it again. Um, Work FISBOs for sale by owners, right? So one of the things you want to do is try to find a for sale by owner, pitch them on your services, and that's how you can get some listings. It's the exact same thing on the rental side, except the best part is majority of rental listings are not represented by a real estate profession. So we call them FURBOs. And it's the exact same thing that you should be doing on the for sale side, you can do on the rental side. You now get access to the rental lease database. It's essentially 12,000 furbos, right? That is gold from trying to work to market, uh, find these properties, get them listed, offer your services up. Uh, we actually had a really interesting, uh, it was Mommer, who I'm sure maybe you guys some know, um, he works for George MLS. He was thinking about using the rental lease database in a very interesting way. You can get access to the listings, right, for free. And you can also get access to the days on market for each listing. So if you're looking through the database and you are seeing a days on market of, let's say, 100 days or so on a rental side, you should be talking with that owner to not only potentially pitch them on your services as a listing agent, but maybe you should be thinking about selling the property as well. So it's a great way to pick up potential sellers as well. And y'all now have access to this. In terms of the data and what we talked about, the comps, you know, like when you're pricing a unit, it does matter. Almost 40% of zip codes, when we looked at the George MLS listings versus George MLS and rental beast listings, had a median rent difference of almost 20% or greater. That is a lot of money, especially when we're talking about affordability issues right now. Look at the median rent when it looks for Gamels versus uh, George MLS and Rental Beast. It's almost a three $300 difference of the median rent. So why is that happening? And there's a few things going on. Um, I think number one, it would not surprise me if higher price rentals work with more real estate professionals, right? That makes sense to me. The second thing is, if you continue to only use the George MLS data, you're essentially creating your own little market of pricing with just the George MLS data versus look at the entirety of the market, which is lower priced. So if you're having problems working with a tenant and trying to find affordable options for them, the rental beast database could potentially be a really strong choice for you because you know the lower rent, some of the lower rent properties are definitely going to be on. In terms of what is this database actually comprised of? So more listings, but also we get quality listings. So more listings, let's unpack this for a second. It is for rent by owner. So like, you know, privately owned landlords, uh, some management companies, we get apartment communities and buildings. So if you drive by an apartment community, we're nine times out of 10, we're gonna have that property in our database. We also have this really interesting thing called, uh, or we work directly with the PM softwares. Um, so I think it was Lisa, Lisa, you were in the, uh, you were in the audience work, uh, watching virtually. I think it sounded like you were a property manager. Is that correct? 
Okay, she may not be listening. That's okay, Lisa. So for property managers, here is what we have found. And it's it, it makes I'm sense. Like, that's <laughs> Were you I'm missing saying. something? Yeah, so it sounded like, do you represent a lot of properties? I do. I've actually been in property management 15 years. And then I've worked in um, SFR, which is single family rental, doing a lot of rental properties. Perfect. So you know what you're talking about. So yes. do, you, do you use a property management software? We used to use Billium and we've used Yardi. I've used almost everything out there. MRI, um, Real Page, Rent Cafe. So yes. <laughs> now, did you when you were doing using those softwares, would you oftentimes get your that rental listing also listed on the MLS? Yes, we were, we would. We could integrate it and put it on MLS. All of the platforms would let us orchestrate other um, systems. Um, core, what was it? Um, uh, what was it? Salesforce. All okay. of it could be integrated on there. So very well. So you're actually probably in the minority here um, on a property manager always getting their listings back into the MLS. But what yes. we found was, and you probably know this better than anybody, the property management softwares do a lot more than just syndicate listings. They have maintenance requests. You can do accounting, bookkeeping, all that sort of good stuff that is built for you know businesses or people who do volume of rentals. The dirty little secret is most of those rental listings never make it back to the MLS. Why? Because they have to essentially manage those listings then in both places. So you work with the property management software and if you then have to put that same listing back into the MLS and update it, if you're doing, you know, let's say you got 100 active rentals at a time, it's very hard to do correctly. So we realized this and we work directly with the property management softwares, the Apolios, the Billions, the Yardies, and we pull their listings in directly. So now you get access to those property management software listings. They very well could be, you know, as Lisa was um, saying, they very well could be Georgia MLS represented as well, but you may just not know because they never get onto the MLS. So what this ends up being is a massive database of rental listings. And we try to do our best to get all sorts of, you know, different listing sources, whether it's not on the internet, newspapers, et cetera. But we're very focused on the quality of listings. If that listing is not coming from an MLS or it's coming from a property management software, we will physically talk with every single building or private owner before that listing goes active in our system. That is an enormous amount of time and people and money that we've spent to make sure that our quality of listings is as good as we possibly can get. It. So why do we do that? Well, number one, we want to try to reduce as best we possibly can scam listings that get into our system. Right. And that's a big deal. I'm sure if you guys have gone on the Craigslist and some of those other sites, it's hard. It's wild, wild west out there. We do our best to scan all or to remove all of those scams. Additionally, we want to get you the information for each listing that actually matters. So uh, showing information, parking, pets, laundry, but also is that property actually offering a commission for a real estate professional? So us being able to talk with that person before that listing goes live is crucial in getting all that information um, to, to give you guys the best in class listings that we can possibly get. Yeah, um, how is the dollar is handled on the rest of these listings not available on the MLS? Great question. So on every single listing, uh, actually it's really regardless, every listing in our system, uh, there is a section that talks about showing information. So for all of the rental beast listings, that is part of our process of getting that listing live. So it could be, please work to, you know, call the management company, use this software that they use. It could be, um, here's a link schedule showing that way. We'll detail whatever the actual showing information is inside of every single listing. Did you have a question? No? Okay. Yes. Uh, a couple of years ago, I guess I worked with Rental of these, trying to grow as a, I guess a buyer's agent. Okay. So I just uh, showed up at the apartment complex and I set up a point uh, their leasing office, and I just felt like I was not really relevant to the third party that the buyer didn't see me or the renter didn't see me as a relative in this process. 
So I don't know how that works. Is it changed? Is there something different? Am I missing something? Or? I think so. That's a really good question. And it's something that we get asked all the time. And I think it really comes down to you selling yourself to that renter, right? So making sure that they understand you are going to help them do uh, a variety of things. I'm going to set up your showings for you. I'm going to be your, you know, your asset of bringing you along to these different showings. If we don't get into the property you like, I'm going to have extras on the backup. So it's a little bit of the salesmanship of making sure that that renter understands. In terms of the actual logistics of when you go to a management company or a building, it totally depends on what they internally are doing. Um, oftentimes, to ensure that you get a commission off of that, you will have to, uh, the, the applicant will have, not the applicant, the renter will have to add you um, on the application or make sure that you go for the actual oh, show. You, you so, that just, so that just kind of depends on, you know, the actual building and what they are doing. But it comes back to making sure that the renter understands your value. Uh, here's what I'm doing. Here's why you need me. Um, and I'm going to make sure that you get a property. So it's a little bit different for each property, but yes. Uh, a couple things. And I think this kind of, this was in relation to what he just asked too. Uh, apartment complexes present in rental these have been already filtered to get permission for agents. Good. Okay. So the answer is yes and no. The, we, it's part of our uh, due diligence process. We're bringing the building on to figure out if that building is going to be offering some sort of commission. And we are going to very clearly stipulate that in the listing details of that listing. But we are not going to just put properties in there that are offering a commission. There's a lot of legality or why why we should not do that. But also from a business perspective for every real estate professional, I think it depends on how you want to work rentals. But I personally have worked with a ton of real estate agents who don't actually necessarily make a commission off of the rental and they're strictly doing this as a relationship business. Obviously, if you can make a commission, we want to do that, but we're not just going to have just listings in there that offer a commission. Yes, these are good. Keep coming. Uh, how do you know if the listing of rental is still active? Rental agencies take many applicants at once to qualify them? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do our absolute best to try and uh, update these listings. So we do that in a few ways. Uh, every single listing that is not, we don't have a essentially, well, let me start somewhere else. We have little bots crawling on the internet that pick up all sorts of information off if the property is still available or not. So we have automated processes that help do that. Additionally, if a bot is not able to pick up if this is rented or not, we will then have somebody call and actually physically call the property to keep it updated. If a property has been on the market, or within rental bees, I think it's about a week and a half to two weeks, and nobody has, you know, the bot hasn't picked up any rent change, and we can't get in touch with them, we'll just drop the listing. So it will no longer be active. Will you find rented listings in our database? Yes, it is physically impossible for us to get as up to date as we possibly can be. This stuff changes every single minute, but it's going to be much more reliable than other websites out there. And it's all in one spot for you. So you don't have to go search them across the internet. I, is there anyone on the platform who's in the class now that has signed up for Rental Beast? I'm actually a Rental Beast Pro. I signed up and I've been on it about four days and I've gotten two clients. <laughs> and it was really yeah. neat um, because I used to do apartments. You know, I didn't care about the commission. I am using them. I put the, the, um, the property management company in my client list and I've been kind of keeping track and I'm just watching just like in apartments when they don't rent with us we'll keep track of the traffic and just follow back up with them a couple of days before their lease expires pitch them again and see if you can't bring them to your property or either sell them on a house <laughs> so well, i yeah. just keep in touch with them even though i'm not one of the places i did place a lady yesterday i didn't get a commission i did call the property first and ask were they using locators and they said no not at this time so I just went on and sent her anyway. And I said, well, look, when your lease is up, if you're ready to purchase, you know, I have some great deals and I'm just kind of working with her through the process and nursing her through her lease so I can get her as a sale later. That's awesome. Um, well, congratulations, Lisa, on that. Uh, and we did not plan this, just, you know, that was, I, we did not plan. We did, not promise. <laughs> um, but that's awesome. And I think that your view on, 
how you're working rentals and your business is going to set you uh, up for success for long term. You know, it's not just a how do I necessarily make commission right now? Obviously, we've got to do that as real estate professionals. But it's how do you make sure that business is sustainable over the next three, four, five, six, seven years? Um, so hats off to you, Lisa. Congratulations on, on doing that. Got it. More yeah, Please. and talk with them about this. So, really good questions, everybody. Robin, if you got more, I would again talk with your broker. Uh, if not, you can email me pj at rentalbeast.com and um, you know, we can try to take this offline. Rental beast search. So we, we understood it's massive. There's a lot of quality listings. That's just as important of having a lot of listings. So how to actually use it. Uh, this is a live screenshot of what it looks like. The big red arrow, you're going to see three different tabs an all tab, which is exactly what it sounds like, all listings in your search, an MLS tab, so it's just MLS listings, and then a rental beast tab. And that rental beast will be only the rental beast listings. So why did we separate this out? Well, we had some comments that, hey, I don't want to necessarily work MLS listings. I only want to work rental beast or vice versa. We wanted to make it very easy for you to filter by that so you can see what's available for it. Being able to slice and dice the database is important. So all the different fields that you would expect to have to be able to you know, run searches for, you have run it by date available, lease terms, school district, pets, parking, laundry. Um, and even some of those like date available is not always a concept that MLS actually has because you know on the for sale side, date available is not a thing. Our system has that. So you can search by it a variety of different ways. And we have a map search. Um, I highly suggest if you have you know some time later today, run a search and look on the map. Why? Because it's really interesting to see where the MLS listings are compared to the rental beast listings. It's a great little overview of where the listings are. You can do searches on the map, meaning you put the, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking on the term, shapes on the map. You, there's all sorts of different ways you can use it. Uh, it's a really fun tool. I would, I would definitely suggest it. And last but not least, Running comparative market analyses is obviously very important. You can use all of the MLS listings. If you want to use the rental beast listings as part of your market analyses, you would have to pay for rental beast pro to get access to it. Um, but at the very least, you can eyeball your list, uh, eyeball any of the rental beast listings to try and figure out if your rental's priced at the right way. And this is, and I'll show this in a little bit, but this is what a, you know, an actual uh, executed um, summary market analysis looks like. Okay, core rental functions on the client communications. You can add rental clients directly into the system. Anytime a lead gets generated and you accept that lead, or maybe it's off of your listing, that person will automatically uh, get put into your client list. Whenever you are working with a client, so let's say you're sending you know, a few listings that they're interested in, or you set them up on the uh, automatic drip, right? When a new listing gets added, they are gonna get a nice looking email, just like this, gets a, some good information about the property. And what's very cool about this is when they actually click on the listing, we are driving them to rentalbeast.com for a rental, their renter area. So why is that important? Well, if you are sending alerts to somebody, you know, and especially client listings, it could be a lot of listings. And to that person might lose listings. They may not be able to see all the ones you've sent. All of the listings you send will automatically be populated in their renter area. So they can easily see all the different listings that you're sending them. And they can also communicate with you through it. So if they like a listing, they can give it a little thumbs up. That gives you a good idea of if they like it or not. They can schedule a showing through here. They save listings. They can even dislike listings. And it just gives you a good idea of what is actually happening. Every time a client interacts, it's going to be listed in your client activity hub. So easy way to think about this. Uh, people here use Facebook, you know, your news feed, which essentially a collection of all your friends, like what they're doing, your feed. Same thing for your client page. So you're going to be able to see when somebody gets an inventory alert, when they save the listing, when they schedule a showing, if they dislike a listing, all that sort of good stuff. We're just trying to make it very easy for you and the uh, client to communicate and keep it in one spot. Um, you know, as a renter, you you can be all over the place sometimes. So making it easy to have it in one spot is important. Yes. So you you saying that like um, got potential rentals, you can actually just put them in the um, system. That is, yeah, I would not. I, I would suggest it. 
Okay. And I'll show you how we do that in a little bit. Okay. Yep. Once you get them in there, you can get them up to send, either send listings to them, get them on the automated drip. And again, all their information is going to be sent right back to you, which is awesome. If you have a rental listing, there are some ways to market your listing through Rental Beast. Again, what do you not want to do if you have a rental listing? You don't add it into Rental Beast. Add it through your Paragon or your Connect MLS, and it will automatically get into Rental Beast. If you make a change in Paragon or Connect MLS, let's say your rent changes, it will automatically flow through into Rental Beast as well. You don't need to touch it. What you can edit, though, and I would suggest it is your applications settings, which we'll go through in a little bit, or your leads and notes. So if you do want to get your listing onto rentalbeast.com, it will automatically happen. But if you don't, you can deselect it. Also, if you want to have a little bit more exposure for your rental listing, we do have some premium listing syndication options, RemPath, uh, Zumper, Realtor.com, et cetera. That would be part of Rental Beast Pro. Um, but at the very, very least on the free side, your listing is going to get directly on to rentalbeast.com. This is what the website looks like. It's a beautiful looking page. It's mobile responsive. You know, we want to make it very easy for your clients to actually see the rental listings as well. An another great piece, and this is a heavily used tool for any agents who have listings, getting, about, getting it up onto Facebook is important, right? It's a great way to get lead generation. You can have a one-click post with Rental Beast uh, for your rental listing. So if you had a rental listing, it's active in Rental Beast. There's that little arrow down next to the apply now button. If you click that, you're going to have your share listing area. Click Facebook, you log in once, and then you can automatically post that to your, it, most likely your business profile or your personal profile to try to get some lead generation uh, going through Facebook. When anybody clicks on that, that um, ad in Facebook, they're going to get brought back to a listing details page. And any of the leads that sign up will always go back to you and you own them. We are not in the business of sharing leads, your listing, your lead. So you don't have to remember everything I told you today. We have a lot of options for training that we're going to go through those. You've got a variety of 24-7 training options, and they are DIY, meaning you've got an enormous amount of resources, whether it's webinars. We have a ton of webinars. We have a ton of help articles. We even have a tutorial center that's uh, inside the platform. You click a rocket icon. I'll show you what that looks like. And you're going to get live step-by-step -step instructions of how to do certain things in the system. So here it is, this tutorial center. I don't know if you guys can see it over there, but there is a, a rocket icon down on the bottom left-hand side. You click that and you're brought to the tutorial center. When we're done today, I'm going to give every single, I'm going to give everybody some uh, four next steps of what I think you should be doing. Uh, number two, the quick start. It is the best place to learn the system. There's five guides to just quickly learn the system. Everything is step-by-step -step inside of it. It's a highly used tool. People really enjoy that. And in the live demo, I'll show you where, where you can get the access to this too. See that big question mark? When in doubt. It should be on the bottom left hand side. Oh, the rocket. Yes. Um, when in doubt, click the question mark icon. You got a question? Click the question mark icon. You get access to a help center. Now, it actually is not showing because this was debuted earlier this week. Is also another button that says webinars. And we're going to try and get, and Andre, I'll work with you, try to get a recording of this webinar. So we'll actually have it on your webinars page. But we have, Think about six or seven other webinars. Some are on demand and some are scheduled to learn pieces of the software. When in doubt, click the question mark icon and you can get to Help Center. But, and this is actually what an article looks like in the Help Center. So it might be step-by-step -step instructions. There could be a video, could be a GIF. It just kind of depends on you know, what the content is. When in doubt though, you can also chat with us. So we got a live people who are, full-time United States-based members of the support team. They are chatting with people all day. Um, you click, I need support, and you're going to be talking to a live person through a chat. Almost onto the, onto the demo. So Rental Beast University is our last slide. 
like I said, you get access to a free rental university that is specifically built for rental, uh, the rental transaction. It is not, what it's not going to do is, or it's not focused specifically on how to actually like create a lease. Like we'll talk about that, but this is more out in the field training. So how do you actually generate leads? How do you talk with those, with those leads? How do you schedule a showing and go through some scary scenarios of what possibly could go wrong in a showing? And you get all of that training for free within Rental Beast University. There's another big reason why George MLS wanted to work with us. You know, this is part of the training, the tools, tech, and training to give all their members access to, you know, the premier online rental university out there. All right. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Rental Beast Pro yet. We'll talk about it uh, in, at the end. Let's do a live demo. So if you wanted to run an application for a property, let's say that's not in the MLS, um, but you, you know, you have the property contact and you have the, um, the applicant's information. If you click your applications tab, you get brought into your applications area. Anytime an application has been submitted or you've started an application, it will show in this area. But for the question um, that we got asked, can you create a one-off? Absolutely. Come up to the big red initiate an application uh, property and you're in this uh, a, a rental application form. So you would need to specify the property contact. This is the person who's gonna be reviewing the reports. You always need to have a property associated with it. And then you can submit the applicants. So yes, you can you can do a one-off application as well. Uh, when the applicant applies, how much money do they have paid per adult? Thirty six dollars per application. But the nice thing is, you can reuse that report an unlimited number of times for thirty days. So that same person can reuse the same application without having to pay again for thirty days. Okay, let's get through this. So I, we got, wow, we got 1020. All right. So we're going to run through this pretty quickly. Live demo. So let's say we're running a search, all right? And I'm sorry, whenever we're doing a Zoom, by the way, this system is going to run a little bit slower. So forgive me, but all right. So we're running a search. Let's just see the entire database, what it looks like in Georgia. Look at that. All right, so we have on the all tab, about 15,000 active rentals, about 3,000 are for the MLS, another 12,000 are rental beast listings. Again, these are listings, this 12,000 are listings that you would have to go elsewhere to find. And right now you get a preview of these listings. So what does that mean? You get the address of the information, you get the rent, the units, the bedrooms, the baths, all that sort of good stuff. If you click on one of these listings, it is going to ask you to sign up for Rental Beast Pro. So if you do want full access, meaning all the listing information for each one of these listings, it would be for Rental Beast Pro and as $18 a month. Um, otherwise, if you're working MLS listings, you can click directly in to a listing and you get brought into the listing details page of that listing. So you'll notice a few things. All this information is available inside the MLS, right? This is what was submitted by the agent inside of Connect MLS or Paragon. So you get the pictures. You'll notice over here, we have a schedule of showing button. This is directly through showing time. So we've got showing time integration, but you're going to get the information you'd expect. So you get the address and listing contact information. You get some listing information. Here's where the compensation is. You're going to get property information, building information. And one other thing that I love, it's down at the bottom, is this, it's this widget called Local Logic, and it will give you some really interesting highlights on where that listing is, like the neighborhood, the area. It can overlay school district amenities. So, like if you want to know how many restaurants are in the area, just a nice little way to explore the neighborhood a little bit more for somebody who may not know it. Um, if you got time, I'd definitely play around with this uh, Local Logic tool. It's a very, very fun little little widget. All right, so. Let's say you're interested in sending this property off to somebody. And this is the same for every property. Let me see if I can show you this. You would click the envelope icon. And then from here, you can select a client. So let's say I'm working with Stephanie. 
Um, and, or I could even type in my own email. You know, if I don't have a client that's in my client list already, select the full report, subject, message, send, and I'm then sending listings to a client. So they can see the listings on their side. Once they actually you know, click on a listing, they're going to be asked to uh, sign up for Rentalbees. So just input their you know, name, contact information, et cetera. But then you've made that link with that client. So that means whenever that client goes onto any Rentalbee site, any of their activity will go back to you and you only. So it's a great way to make sure you connect yourself with that client. Now, let's say that we're running a search um, and we're going to run a search in. We're going to get specific here for a second. Let's run a search in Decatur. So I clear it. I start typing in Decatur. One thing you need to always do when you're searching, select the drop down. So if you just typed in Decatur and then press search, it's not going to register that Decatur is part of it. You actually have to click the area from the drop down, see how it was populated in there. You can do multiple different zip codes at a time, multiple different areas. So it gives you a lot of flexibility with the search. I run search. And now, there we go. So I got all listings. I have the MLS listings and I've got the rental lease listings. Uh, let's say I want to get a little bit more specific. So I'm looking for, let's say a one bedroom up to a three bedroom. Oh, well, we'll do two bedroom networks. Search again. Right. And there we go. So the MLS is 22. Rental Beast has about 452. Now, let's say this search is somebody that I know I'm going to work with a bunch. They just called me up and was like, hey, PJ, I need to get a property indicator. Can you help me? So what would I do? Well, and this go kind of goes back to your question earlier. First thing I would do is I would add them to my client section. So if I, I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But once I've done that, I'm going to set them up on an inventory alert. Because I want to make sure that they're going to get all the new properties that fit their alert. So first thing, I hit my uh, floppy disk icon and I, br I bring the shortcut in. So let's say this is PJ's search. I hit new search. Once, I cre once I've created my search, I then, uh, you can't see it, but it hits create an alert. I click create an alert. Okay. Yes, you've made it. Awesome. Now I go to my alerts page. And you're going to see my search at the top. So that is a search for Decatur with the criteria that I specified. I then add my client. So let's say uh, PJ is not in the, my client list, but I'm going to put Brian in just for example. I select him. So we know that that's where the email is going out to. And then I can choose, do I want to send an email once a day, twice a day, or instantly? And this is going to go on your behalf, right? It's either if you select once a day, it means that that, that person is going to get emailed all the new listings or listings that fit that person's criteria. Um, same thing's gonna happen on twice a day or instantly. Right now you can, you can do this right now. Yep. Yep. Here's what you're gonna do. We're gonna go over to the client space. We're gonna add them in here. So, uh, it was Glenn, right? Yes. Glenn, for this demonstration, your last name's Thomas. Okay, Glenn, Thomas, I put in your email. Maybe you have a phone number, you probably want to add that. Oh, no. Oh, there it is. Okay. I hit add. Great. Your client's now been added. So that's the first thing. Now, if you have information on, you know, Glenn, you click on Glenn, and then you're going to be able to edit the client. From here, this is where you input all the information that Glenn's looking for. So their beds, their baths, et cetera, you know, what they want in a property. Then I'd go back to my search, and I would start looking for properties for them. So in, in your, uh, we were doing Decatur. And the nice thing is I can just hit Decatur again. I hit search. Let's say they are caring about rent. So anywhere between 1500 to 2500. I hit search. And so now I've got their listings. So from here, I would want to go, just like I did before, add this search as a shortcut.
I hit new search. I've added Glenn as a search. I can create an alert. Yes. Great. Let's go to my alerts page. I see Glenn search at the top. I add Glenn as a client. I say, I want to send an email, X number of days. I press submit and you're done. So what you just did was add Glenn as a client. So the client you meet today, you've run a search for them and you've set them up on an inventory alert so that any new okay. listings or listings that you know get changed, meaning the rent gets dropped into their prices, price range, they would get emailed instantly. Now, it's also great about what you did on the search side is because you saved a search for them, you can come back to that search whenever you want. So think of, you, you, uh, you all know what a bookmarks bar is right on your top of your toolbar. You've got that same system with Rental Beast. So let's say, Glenn, I just talked with you, but then I call from Regina. And Regina's like, hey, PJ, I need you to help me right away. Can you get the search that I've already given to you? I've already worked with Regina. I go over to Regina search. Instead of me having to go in and key in all the different filters for her, it's saved. So I've run the search. Her filters automatically populate. We also are an indicator. I hit search. And now this is going to be Regina's search. So it's an easy way to flip flop between clients because I'm sure, as you know, you potentially talk with multiple people at one time. Very easy to do that with inside the rental view system. So I hope that did that help answer that question. Perfect. Yeah. So basically, that's kind of like a, like what we just saving everything that they want and what they're looking for. It's kind of like a, um, like a, like a, 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 a
whether or not you've uh, enabled apply now. So you can always bring it down if you need it. To actually edit the listing, again, you wouldn't want to do this outside of editing the application section or the leads and notes section. Leads is just you know operating, giving yourself more syndication options. So everything else would be APA to edit would be automatic. Exactly. To, like 10, 15 minutes for it to populate, but everything will happen. Yes. Education. Click education, you're brought directly into Rental Beast University if it wants to load. There we go. So here's your education portal. Everything that you need to know how to do a rental is going to be inside of here. Everything is free. It's all part of the Georgia MLS package. And I think that's what I've got. I know we, we ran uh, four minutes over. So that is Rental Beast. Um, it's a high level overview of why rentals, the gateway functionality that all of you currently have access to. Um, hey, Mr. Clay, can I talk? Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for going at a good pace. And that's what I wanted. So actually, I was uh, asking, like, uh, do you, ha you have the details of the owner? Uh, like, uh, you have the listings from the owner also in the portal. So will we be able to access the owner contact details also, like in order to contact them directly? Or is there a possibility? Because that's in the other portals like Zillow, they, they direct to their phone number and then it never got responded somehow. Yeah. So if you want full contact information for all rental beast listings, that would be part of the rental beast pro package. So you could upgrade uh, on the screen, but you click the big upgrade button and then you can purchase a subscription. Thank you so much. It was really very nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, it, $18 a month. And that would then give you full access to all of the listing information for every single rental beast listing. And do you verify those details, the contact information? Yes. Every single listing that um, is not from the MLS or from a property management software, meaning that we, we've you know, found it on our own, every single listing, we talk with them. So we talk with somebody at the property community to make sure that one, it's available, and then two, get all the information. What you might see, and what I mean, what you're always going to see is there's definitely going to be listings, let's say, on other websites that we don't have, and it could be maybe it's exclusive to that to that website. But more likely, when we've reached out to that property to try and get them onto Rental Beast, we couldn't get in contact with them, so we would not add that as a listing in our system. Got it. And do you also mention where this listing is coming from, the source of the listing? Do you also mention that on the listing? I do. So that's actually, that's a great question. And, and better yet, you can actually see it visually uh, if I yeah. get to where I need to be. So on the, so if I'm working in the all tab, okay, great. This is perfect. So a few things. So this is the all tab, right? So this is all listings, regardless of whether or not they're MLS they're from a property management software, they're rental beast. See that little rental beast icon? That's a rental beast listing, right? Uh, you guys can't see this yet, can you? You've got an MLS listing, got a clear MLS tag. The listings that have nothing next to them, that means it's from a property management software. So a property manager in the area has added this as an active listing to their portfolio, and we've pulled it in from our integrations from them. So, uh, Naman, these are great questions. I want to I want to get us back to Rental Beast Pro, if I can quickly, just to talk about that. Um, if you want to jump off, please do. But we're going to go quickly through some Rental Beast Pro. Like, what do you get access to? So again, really quick before you do that, I think when she was asking, like, what the um, where the listing came from, like for the Rental Beast listings, if like you found it through Zillow or found it through Facebook or whatever, uh, is there a way to know that? No, we're not. Or we is don't. that part of Pro? No, we don't list that on this specific. Uh, we don't. We're not going to list that on the Rental Beast side because it comes from all sorts of different websites. Usually, a listing will get added not just to one; it gets added to multiple. So we're not right. spe specifying exactly where that listing came from. It's a good question. Okay. But you're able to categorize the one from the property managers, like with no symbol or something, no sign, something like that. Exactly. Yep. If you see a listing that's in the rental beast tab or the all tab, all tab that does not mm -hmm. either have a clear blue MLS logo or a little rental beast icon, that means it's coming from a property management software. 
Okay. And is there a way like to just put up the address and the rental uh, software can uh, easily like do the rental estimates or we have to do it like ourselves. Like we have to pick the listings and then do the rental estimates because Zillow has usually we put the listing and then it gives the price. This is the rental estimates for you for this property based on the similar properties. So is that a possibility uh, or do we have to pick the listings that we have to do the rental comparables and then we have to do? Oh, pick yes. Out Good question. Yes. Yeah, so if you you would have to run a search for comparable properties um, and then you can put you can add them into the CMA. But no, we don't we don't have the not yet. We don't have the ability for you to just add an address in and we're going to tell you what the rent is. Not yet. Okay. Yes. Uh, somebody has a question about uh, they already have Appfolio. How do they activate Appfolio to send you this? Great question. If you're using Appfolio, mm -hmm. once you click or for each listing, when you uh, choose internet syndication, thanks so much for coming. We will automatically get your listing. So there's nothing that you have to do. Once it, again, internet syndication, which I'm sure you know the button, you click that, and then that listing will automatically get to Rental Beast. You don't have to do anything. And we'll be able to pull these listings to our website on the current website that from the rental management, if we use the pro version, we'll be able to uh, pull these listings to our website. Is there a possibility? Like we can create a tab on our website and then pull up the listings in the area? Kind of. So we don't, you can, we don't have a way for you to pull the listings uh, into your website. We're going to do you one better. We're going to give you a website. Um, that is specifically rental beast listings or some of the MLS listings. So that's part of the, down at the bottom here, um, the, I don't know where it mass is. There it is. Uh, at the bottom, the custom branded rentals website. Uh, part of the pro package is a rental website that you can configure the listings of what you want shown. So if you have rental listings available and you only want to show those listings on your website, you can configure it to show that. If you don't have rental listings, you can then configure to say, I only want to show rental listings in like Decatur or Duluth or Atlanta. And it will show all those rental listings on the website. So you can use rental beast listings as a way to generate leads. So you can't pull them as you would like an IDX feed, but we give you the option to out of the box website that allows tenants to search. And it's specific to you. So, and, yep. Sorry about that. So uh, is there a functionality of a autoresponder or any templates that we can, uh, if somebody inquired, is there a template or autoresponders attached to this thing as well? Yeah, you're doing a great job selling pro for me. So uh, the bottom side, on the very bottom, this new client autoresponder. Yes, so we have that functionality. So what happens? Uh, you accept a rental lead. Instead of you having to send out an email, uh, you know, you have to basically make the email or text them. We'll send an email that you can create. You can completely create the, we have a template. You can make the words however you want them to, and that will automatically be sent out to the client. Yes. You're okay. It will be recorded. I'm going to set it up on also within rental rental beast on the you know that that question mark that's on the top if you click that there's a button that says webinars and then that will give you not only this a recording we'll eventually get that up here but uh all the other webinars that we that you have access to so we do some deep dive like 10 15 minute webinars on search or the tenant screening tool. So yeah, perfect. Um, when you sign up for pro, is there a contract or you can cancel at any time? You can cancel at any time. We see, typically we see users who sign up for Rental Beast Pro, um, they stay on for multiple months. Usually it's like year long uh, because they want to invest in the actual rental business. Thank you so much. All right. So this is a summary of what you get. I think the biggest, the biggest changes for pro, you get access to all of the for rent by owner listings, right? That's number one. That's the biggest deal. Tenant leads. So this is important. You're listing your lead. However, we also generate a ton of tenant leads that are coming or that are interested in properties that are not represented by 
uh, agents. So that 12,000, right? Those, all those listings that we get that are not MLS listings, we send those listings out to the internet and people obviously look at them and they're trying to get information on them. If somebody requests information off one of those properties that's not represented by an MLS member, it will be sent out as an available tenant lead to all of our Rental Beast Pro subscribers. So, and I'm just going to skip to this because we're going to do this. Oh, here we go. The way that it works is a, a property, a, a Rental Beast Reviewed listing goes out on the internet. Somebody requests a lead or requests information, and then it's a round robin all to all of our Rental Beast Pro members. And you can specify the leads that you want to get. So if you only want to get leads in certain zip codes, you can say, I only want to get tenant leads in these zip codes. If you only want to get leads above a certain rent, you can also specify that as well. Um, this is, there's no additional charge onto, on these leads. It's just part of your Rental Beast Pro package. Um, we're not going to take any sort of commission off any of these leads. If you do send, you know, if you do work with them, anything that you make, it's yours, obviously, minus your split with your broker. And for the, I think it was uh, Naman, your great question uh, about an automated lead response. So this is the template of what it looks like. If I accept the lead, automatically send a welcome email X minutes after leads accepted. On the bottom here is where the actual email that you can fully create the custom content of. All right, that's what I've got for Rental Beast Pro. You get all the access to the listings. You get a custom rental website. You get uh, automated uh, lead response. And you also, you know, last part would be uh, home buyer conversion tool. So part of your client question air when you're a Rental Beast Pro member is a section that talks about, a, are you interested in buying a property or buying a house? If so, how likely? The best way to start converting your renters into buyers, and this sounds silly, is just ask them. Like have that conversation with them. Um, we are spending a lot of time and resources on how can we help real estate professionals convert renters into buyers over the next few months. Uh, we have a tool coming out, um, hopefully you know, October, November, that's going to be able to give each one of your renters a score of how likely they are to buy based off some information that we can get publicly. So the really cool way, and this is you know why we made this, when you're working rentals, you probably have a, like a volume of rental clients that come through. So let's say you've got 100 clients. You know, a big challenge right now, if you have 100 clients, is which one of those hundreds are actually serious about buying and how do I make sure that I communicate with them? So we're going to give each one of those people a score so you know, okay, here are the 10 people that I think, based off of what Rental Beast is saying, is interested in buying and soon. Let me make sure I'm contacting them. So we're doing a lot of work on the renter to buyer side. Um, again, we're going to notate, let everybody know about those tools when they come out. We're expecting something in October, November. I'm really pumped. It should be a big deal for everybody. You sign up? This I love it. That's a great question. Uh, how do you sign up? I just did. <laughs> love that. So how do you sign up? Where's my mouse? It's easy. It's easy. Oh, there you go. Oh. Log into Rental Beast. Click the upgrade button. If you want to talk to a salesperson, get a demo, you can, or you just upgrade to Pro and it will allow you to put a credit card in immediately. The nice thing too is um, you don't have to, there's no other additional sign up, meaning you don't have to get a new login. It's the exact same system. You still ask the same way. It looks the same. It's just added functionality. Yep. Yeah, uh, oh, you can actually go to, uh, so you, you can go on the site. Yeah. 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 There we go. I can't click it because it's going to mess with my system, but yes, it's right there. And if you, for whatever reason, don't have it on your main dashboard. You come over to your the right side and then you can add, oh, this is what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Well, I already added it. You can drag. Yeah. Hit the plus button and you're done. Yeah. Perfect. It's also under the tools section. 
and it's somewhere here. Under partner services. Partner services. Perfect. Rental beast. So a variety of ways that you can actually get access into the system. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, if you have any questions, support at rentalbeast.com. For you. For you at Rental Beast. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming. Support at rentalbeast.com. Uh, we'd love to help you. Please don't be a stranger, but thanks so much for coming on to, to the, today's uh, class.